This is the sixth episode in a series covering the design and construction of a clock for my relay computer. And for those of you who've been following my channel, will know there's been a bit of a gap between the last episode and this one. Not quite the 64 year gap between Bambi and Bambi 2, but still, it's been a while. And I can't even blame it on Covid to be fair, uh, it's more just a case that my day job has been all consuming for the last six months. Uh, but uh, things have settled down a bit and I can finally start servicing my hobbies again. In the last episode I calculated the resistor and capacitor values to achieve my target timing. All fine in theory, but as soon as I tried it on the breadboard everything went downhill very quickly. Here's where I got to. The blue line is the capacitor discharging over time and when it reaches the release voltage the contacts separate as shown on the red line. However, this isn't the clean on to off transition that I was looking for. There's all this bouncy nonsense where the contacts are repeatedly opening and closing. Now I think I've said before that my knowledge of electronics is pretty basic, so I was getting genuinely perplexed here and was really left scratching my head. Fortunately there were some really good suggestions in the video comments which helped massively and I'm now pretty sure it's to do with having two relays in parallel. As a reminder, here's the schematic again for a single relay clock stage. Now if you take it back to a single relay, the bounce disappears. Use two relays and it comes back. It definitely seems to be the two relay coils somehow interacting with each other and uh, one commenter even wondered if it's the proximity of the two relays interacting magnetically. Clearly some experimentation was needed to narrow it down. But then this happened. Yeah, it turns out I don't need to use all the relays in parallel after all. Uh, all I had to do was revisit the clock design and spot something that had been hiding in plain sight all along. Uh, let's have a look now and see if you can spot it. Uh, might at least make me feel a bit better about myself. You can pause the video now if you want to play along at home as it were. Spotted it yet? So the, the contact sets here and here aren't actually needed. They don't do anything. Well, actually that's not quite true. The ones highlighted on the left output the C result, uh, but that's just going off to an LED for testing and display purposes. A definitely not good enough reason to complicate everything by doubling up the relays. Um, well, let's get rid of those extra contact sets then. We're now within the two contact set limit available on each relay, and we can take the C output from the normally open contact at the top there. Yep. It's that simple. Unbelievable. So all I need to do now is go back through my calculations, adjust and then test the new values on my breadboard one last time and we should be back in business. Just before we do though, and as a very quick reminder again, uh, I'm going to try and work back to having each relay in the computer held on for 83 milliseconds. That will give me a peak to peak time of 167 milliseconds, meaning there'll be six cycles a second for a six hertz clock signal. Here's where we arrived at last time then, with a 100 microfarad capacitor and a 100 ohm resistor. That gave me a charging time constant of 10 milliseconds, such that the capacitor would be fully charged in around 50 milliseconds. Then, in the discharging phase, at around 81 milliseconds, we should be hitting the release voltage for the relay coil to switch back off. So, what happens if I move the second relay? Well, charging-wise, the circuit is unchanged. The capacitor charges up through the 100 ohm resistor, which means we're still at a time constant of 10 milliseconds. And the capacitor should be fully charged in around 50 milliseconds. Cool. The discharge route, though, has changed, as we're now going through one coil at 129 ohms, rather than two coils in parallel. As we've only got resistances in series now, it's an easy total of 1,129 ohms. Let's see what that does to the discharge constant. So now that's taken it to just under 113 milliseconds, but we know that's no good because looking at the bottom formula, if we want to hit 3.2 volts after 81 milliseconds, we need to be targeting around 61 milliseconds, not 113. And what I can do is play around the capacitor and resistor values again, and uh, given I've not got much room to play with on the resistance side, it makes sense to bring the capacitance down instead. So let's go back to a 47 microfarad capacitor. OK, that's heading in the right direction. We'll now be charged in around 23.5 milliseconds and our discharge time constant is coming out at around 53 milliseconds. 
I can now play with the resistance to fine tune us back to around 61 milliseconds. Working that back into the discharge constant formula, I'll know I want a resistor of around 270 ohms to achieve that. As in life, what I want and what I can have are two very different things, and so it is with resistors. They come in standard values, and the nearest E6 series resistor is 330 ohms, so let's try that. Hmm, that's pretty close on the discharge constant at just under 64 milliseconds, but I'm a bit concerned at the impact on the charge time, which is now at 77.55 milliseconds. That's a bit close to my liking, and there is a risk the capacitor won't fully charge in each clock cycle. Let's try bringing the resistor down to the next E6 standard value of 220 ohms. Yep, that's much more like it. We'll be charging around 52 milliseconds, well within the 83 millisecond limit, and the discharge constant is 58.7 milliseconds, which is pretty close to the 61.45 we had originally. Um, so, given our new time constant, uh, what does that do to the formula at the bottom? Well, bearing in mind that I'm expecting the relay to release somewhere around 3.2 to 3.3 volts, uh, the only thing that I can actually move is the time. Um, so reversing that calculation off, we get the following. Now according to that calculation, it will now take 76 milliseconds to get down to around 3.3 volts, at which point the relay will switch off. Uh, the charge time is still well within that, so that's fine, and with a full clock cycle there coming in at 152 milliseconds, We'll have a clock rate of around 6.5 Hz, which is a little quicker than the target, but so be it. If I really wanted to get it that much closer, then it's just a case of fine-tuning the resistance. The only last thing to check is the amount of current the capacitor will initially draw. Um, by Ohm's law again, 12 volts through 220 ohms will be 55 milliamps, which is tiny. OK, that's enough maths. Let's give this a try on the breadboard and see if the calculations have any bearing in reality. Right then, so here's the breadboard circuit, so coming in a bit closer. Uh, we've got the uh, relay at the back here, and the uh, positive terminal is coming on the blue line, and the negative terminal is coming on the green line over here. Um, we've also taken off a little tap here to uh, my uh, scope, and that's just directly basically seeing exactly what the relay positive contact is seeing. Uh, we've got our uh, resistor here, that goes into the capacitor here, and then that goes off down to the negative line. Uh, the only last bit we've got here, really, for this part of the circuit, is we've just got the Zener diode there and the uh, regular diode just forming back to back, uh, and that's just protection over the uh, positive and negative contacts on the relay. Um, what else have we got over here? We've got uh, get the camera in the right place. Um, we've got the uh, a pair of contacts here, so these are the normally open contacts. And again, I'm just taking a scope read just off of one of these, just so I can see whether that contact's open or closed. Uh, likewise, I'm just taking off a lead down here, uh, just to see basically what the value is. So uh, when it's on, this will light up. When it's off, it will uh, not light up. Uh, finally then, just over here, we've got this red line here, which is just supplying power from this switch. So when this switch is pressed, that'll provide power to the circuit. When I let go, effectively then it will just be uh, drawing the power down from this capacitor here. Right, OK, well, let's give this all a try and get the uh, scope hooked up. Go then. So uh, first thing I need to do is just set my uh, scope up. So we'll just stop that there for the moment, because uh, there's nothing to see. And what I want to do is I want to trigger uh, repeatedly. So every time I, uh, I get this event, it will uh, recapture it. OK, yeah, so we've got the blue line coming in over here. And this is basically what the uh, relay coil will see. And then on the red one there, we've got the uh, switch contacts, as we saw earlier. So I want to trigger on the red one, which happens to be channel B. And I'm going to do it when the uh, on the falling edge uh, reaches, say, 6 volts. So basically, you, know, you see this little yellow diamond here just to target that. Um, so that should be everything I need now. I'm happy with the scale. I'm happy with the uh, voltage. So all that remains now is for me just to press this button and see what we get. <laughs> yes, might help if I press uh, play as well to start. There we go. Let's try that again. And there we go. That's, that's exactly what I wanted to see. So as you see there, if I keep on repeatedly pressing it, get more or less the same thing every time, which is good. That means it's all consistent. Um, so let's start uh, zeroing in on some of the values here, see what we've got. So uh, this point here is around 3 volts this time. So again, as we said, it's probably... Uh, well, actually, there's probably a bit of a delay, actually, before the uh, switch turns off. So it's probably happening more about here. So you can see then it is about 3.3 like, volts I was talking about earlier. Uh, obviously, this is because we're on the other side of that uh, resistor, so we're seeing a drop there. Uh, but you can see, basically, then, how the capacitor is discharging over time. 
Uh, but what's more important is this point here happened 65 milliseconds. Now that's a little short of where I was expecting it to happen actually. Um, but again, the, the problem with all these components is there'd be a great deal of tolerance in them. Um, I think what I might do as well is um, get the multimeter on them and just check what the values of these components are. Because uh, things like capacitors is like 20% tolerance in them, so uh, you know it, it could vary quite widely. Uh, and what I think I might do then is put the values back into the calculation and see if they come out at the right amount. Um, but either way, it doesn't matter because I've got what I wanted, a nice clean turn off here. It's uh, going straight off, uh, nice and clean, exactly what I wanted. So I might do actually. Uh, so obviously at the moment I'm showing uh, the uh, value here of the capacitor here. Uh, but what I could do is move this probe over to here uh, between the resistor and the capacitor. And what you should be able to do then is see the charging curve as well as the discharge curve. So let's, let's just try that now. So I'm just going to lift that out and put that over down to here. So again, just between the capacitor and the uh, resistor. And if we give that another try now, there you go, you can now see the, uh, the smooth curve coming down. Again, still starts in the same place, smoother comes down, and actually from that point, uh, it's actually seen four volts. And again, the difference is basically because it's just made a potential divider by having that resistor in, in series with that. Um, now, what should be interesting now is if I move the trigger point to, say, 80% of the way, so it's now going to start there instead, and do another trigger, you can basically see then a bit more of the uh, what's happening beforehand. Uh, sorry, pointing at my screen is going to do no good. There we go, yes, yeah, so you can see what's happening before that. If I press this button really quickly, we can almost then start to see what actually it would look like uh, in the uh, real clock counter. So you can see there now where you can see the this point here is where we're starting to charge. So uh, by that point then we've more or less fully charged. Uh, time goes on and then basically this drops down here. So we can see that it's it starts dropping 64 milliseconds beforehand, so ideally we'd want to be fully charged within 120 milliseconds. So let's have a look at that. So uh, 85 there and 138 there, so that's fine. You can see basically then how this charge curve fits the uh, fits basically the pulse that's coming out of this stage. Perfect. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Um, I think we're finally there. Uh, okay, let's let's have a quick read of these components and just see what value they are, and then put them back into calculation and just see if that calculation actually was. Uh, a realistic uh, measure of these, or uh, or if it's actually miles off. Well then, let's try this uh, capacitor first. So I've got my uh, my multimeter here, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, shorter leads with crop clips on, uh, because obviously when I'm doing these capacitors, I don't really want to get them in the wrong place. Uh, so there we go. We pop those leads in there, and if I just take my uh, capacitor off screen. Uh, so again, I need to be very careful to get the polarity the right way around. I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos out there that show you what happens if you don't. Uh, so I'm just going to put on that leg that side. Put that one on the other side. Probably better ways of doing this. Good. Okay. Let's make sure they're not touching. So I'm just going to keep them apart. Like so uh, what I want to do is put it into capacitance mode. I'm expecting 47 microfarads on this one. So I'll uh, take it to the 100 setting. Um, power on and see what we get. So you see that's actually 40, which again, so it's seven, seven below what I want, but actually again, that's well within tolerance, that's absolutely fine. Uh, and interesting actually, just before I recorded this, uh, I've measured a few of the other capacitors and like one was sort of 37, uh, one was 42, there's quite a bit of variation on these, so it does just go to show just how, uh, yeah, just how much variation there can be. And of course, if we look that put into the formula, that can make quite a big difference. But okay, so it's not 47 microfarads we're dealing with, it's 40. Right, okay, so let's do uh, let's do the same now for the uh, resistors and the uh, resistance in the coil of the relay. So again, just come into my multimeter and I'm going to set it up for... Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to do the resistor. So if I do that to uh, the 2K setting, I really should buy an auto-ranging... Um, Multimeter as well, and I don't have to keep faffing around with the uh, with the dial. But uh, again, got my re the uh, resistor here. Um, doesn't matter which way around I put these. Measure it off. So that one's actually two hundred and sixteen. So two hundred and sixteen k, uh, two hundred seventeen now. <laughs> but yeah, two hundred seventeen. Uh, sorry, not two hundred seventeen k. Two hundred seventeen ohms. Uh, so okay, I can put that back into the calculation as well. Oh, right. Okay. So let's do the uh, let's do the same for the uh, relay. So here's the one I've just been using from earlier on the board. 
I'm expecting 1029 on this one, so uh, let's have a look. It's going to be a bit fiddly. Get in there. There you go. So actually, this has a resistance of 966 ohms. So again, interesting. So you can start to see why the calculation might be fairly off. Uh, let's try plumbing these values in and see what happens. Okay, so here we have the uh, all the calculations uh, that we were expecting. So again, with a 220 ohm resistor and a 47 microfarad capacitor, we're expecting it to uh, give a delay of 76 milliseconds. Uh, but actually, that wasn't what we uh, what we actually found out in practice. Um, so let's plumb in the uh, the new values that we took. So it's actually a 270 ohm resistor and a 40 microfarad uh, capacitor. And uh, we actually got the uh, the relay coil to be measuring at 966 ohms. And so plumbing those in, we get actually a uh, charge constant of 8.68 milliseconds and a discharge constant of 47.32. So you can see how it's very much shorter, uh, which actually now means we're kind of expecting the relay to switch off after about 56 milliseconds, which is much closer to it. So I, I think that's all making sense now. It's all hanging together. I mean, the bottom line is all of the components are going to be slightly different values anyway. So I think what that does say is that when I build this, I want to uh, do a measurement of each component and just make sure that they're all uh, coming in at the same values um, or very similar values, and that should then give me a consistent time. So I think that's where it'll stop for now. Um, so in the next video, I need to uh, put it all together on the breadboard. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll take the circuit we've got so far, uh, implement the ring counter, and then make sure it works. So I'll see you next time, and uh, hopefully there won't be as much of a gap between videos as last time. Bye.